right. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to December's session of Marketing Talks. I'm Chesco Cordero from Insightful Accountant and your host for today. Now, actually, before we start, I'd like to go ahead and ask a, few, a question of the day, just as everyone's kind of coming in and settling down in front of their computers, their phones, their tablets, what have you, whatever you have in front of you right now. I'm going to go ahead and ask Janelle, since Christmas is five days away, I cannot believe how time is just speeding by. Since it's going to be Christmas in five days, what are the top three kinds of gifts that you would love to get this Christmas? Ooh, top three kinds of gifts. You know what? I really, I, I'm really enjoying experiences because it's like the best memories um, versus stuff. Um, however, I am also, I, I love clothes, jewelry, you know, all this, all the stuff that girls like. So, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but mainly I think experiences are, are a lot of fun. Definitely. Cause it's something that like, Oh, remember the time that this person gave me this kind Absolutely. of gift where we went to wherever. Right. <laughs> and it forces you to, uh, decompress and step away from yeah. work and spend some quality time being present with the important people in your life. So I yeah, say. and it kind of it also kind of gives you like an idea of how much someone knows you too. Like they know very that you true. would enjoy this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Which is really very fun. Yeah. I love that. That's so fun. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Again, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to December session of Marketing Talks. I'm Chesco Cordero from Insightful Accountant and your host for today. Now in this marketing talks, we'll be going over managing tire kickers and setting expectations with prospects with the lovely Janelle Sikora. Now I'll have her introduce herself in just a little bit after I cover a few of the housekeeping items. Now there is no CPE for this as it is just a 30 minute webinar. If you have any questions, you guys know the drill. Please enter them in the Q&A panel and I want you guys to be specific. Don't just say what did you mean you gotta ask hey janelle what did you mean by you like having experiences as a gift mainly because she might not get your questions right after you put them in there now we'll be sending a link to the recording after the webinar and it's also going to be up on our youtube page within about 24 hours if you want to go check it out over there you'll find many other webinars along with janelle's past sessions of marketing talks that might interest you i'll also be putting the link to our youtube channel right into our chat as well as the copy of the slide deck i'll be rolling out those links and the copy of the slide deck throughout the webinar in case you might have missed it the first time I put it up there. And lastly, do not forget that Insightful Accountant's 2024 Pro Advisor Awards applications and nominations are still ongoing. And what does it take to be a part of Insightful Accountant's 2024 Pro Advisor Awards? Really all it takes for you is for you to participate. Now there are two ways to participate. It's either being nominated by someone else or you can actually nominate yourself and give yourself a little pat on the back. I'll we'll be putting that link right into our chat for you guys to check out. And actually, that's it for me. Janelle, welcome and thanks for being here. Thank you so much, Jessica. This is so much fun. So I am Janelle Sakura, as Jessica mentioned. Um, I am the co-founder of Kajabra Marketing for Accountants. And what I want to do today is talk a lot about uh, managing these tire kickers and setting expectations, like Jessica mentioned. So first of all, Welcome to Tuesday Marketing Talks. I was thinking that since tax season is right around the corner, I wanted to talk about something that's really timely today. How to stop wasting time with people who are only interested in price and set expectations so that you and your clients have a very positive experience working together. And really at the core, it all comes down to how to vet prospects who are not your ideal clients and then how to communicate with your ideal clients. So let's get started. Change the screen, okay. All right, so last month, if you were on the marketing talks in November, we talked about how to identify your ideal clients. This is mission critical. If you didn't see that webinar, try and go back and watch it. We're gonna cover just a teeny bit of it today as a, refre a refresher, but Knowing who your ideal clients are will help you filter through the tire kickers and set expectations correctly with clients so that you can build those long-term profitable relationships with them. And I want to share what we're going to be covering today. And I'd like to break it down into three things. So essentially, the revenue at all costs myth. 
or the belief that taking on any client, regardless of fit, can boost your revenue. We know that isn't true. Chasing clients who are not a good fit can cost you more time, energy, and resources in the long run. So let me ask you this. How many times have you taken a call or had a meeting during tax season or at any other time of the year, or just a particularly busy time for you, where at the end of it, you felt like it was this giant waste of time? Not every prospect is worthy of your time, I promise you. I know. I've done this. I want to tell you a story. Early in my career, I was just willing to do business with anyone way early in my career. And I had a prospect call me and request a meeting. And I knew who this prospect was. They were in my crosshairs and I was super excited to get a call. So I went against my better judgment. I didn't ask the right questions. I didn't qualify him. I drove 30 minutes to sit down with this person and believe it or not, all they were looking for at the end was just a price comparison, essentially to make sure that they were getting a good deal where they were. He didn't want to make any changes. So talk about a big giant waste of time and a lesson learned. Um, I want to save you from that. So speaking of quality prospects, um, the second thing is what I call tire kickers. What are tire kickers? Essentially people who are more interested in finding a lower price than they are in the quality and value of your service. Kind of like the guy that I went and met with that was a waste of my time. So these people are not the ones who should be taking up your precious time during the day. And then the third thing I wanna, we're gonna be covering is the power of ideal clients and communicating with them properly from the very beginning. Know who your ideal clients are first. They are those who understand the value of your services and expertise, and they are willing to invest in them to get results. These guys, these clients are way more likely to become loyal customers, leading to increased client retention and positive word of mouth, which leads to referrals. So we'll talk about how to set expectations early and foster those long-term relationships as well. Okay. Now, I one of the things that I, I really strive to do in these marketing talks is make sure that you can take action when you walk away and implement something that you learn in your firm right away. So here's what you can expect to learn today. Again, can you tell I like threes? Number one, are you ready to step outside your comfort zone? How does that saying go? If you, what is it? If you want something different, you have to do something different, something like that. I'm gonna show you how to eradicate that super frustrating and time-consuming cycle of dealing with tire kickers and, and price shoppers. Um, if that's something that really appeals to you, throw a yes in the chat for me, if you don't mind. Okay. Oh, yes, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yes, they are looking for free advice or verification of something they've already done. Yeah, well, you know what? They can pay for that too. Um, okay. All right. Um, let's see here. Okay. I'm also going to show you, um, how to set client expectations early and how to manage them because this will eliminate a lot of that frustration. It will eliminate client turnover as well. And then once you have the systems in place to manage those expectations for your ideal clients, it'll be so much easier to over deliver, um, and delight your clients, which again, will lead to referrals and higher overall retention. So these are the three big takeaways. I'm gonna show you some systems and some steps. Um, so let's get started. All right, here's where we're gonna start. We're gonna start at the foundation. Let's level set who your ideal clients are for just a quick moment. So in your world, an ideal client is someone who understands that importance of keeping meticulous track of their finances and they see the value of hiring a professional or some prof professional services to handle that. So a couple of examples. So for example, a small business owner, maybe someone who's striving to expand her business, that person is gonna understand that accurate accounting and bookkeeping is crucial for making informed financial decisions. Um, it Typically in this case, this person will see the value in investing in a professional CPA firm or bookkeeping firm. And let me underscore that high value clients invest in quality services and expert advice. That's you. 
And then another example could be, for instance, a fast growing tech startup that needs complete financial advisory services or an owner of an HVAC business who wants to add employees, but isn't sure when is the right time to do that based on cash flow. And by the way, that same HVAC business owner might also be very anxious about tax season because he isn't good at keeping his books. He knows they're a mess and he has no idea what hello. So ideal clients understand that they that paying for accounting and tax planning and advisory services and business consulting are an investment and essential for the financial health of their business. So not only will they pay for your expertise, but they these ideal clients will be far more loyal to you and you'll be able to enjoy a much more longstanding relationship with them. And again, again, they bring you referrals. Um, also, I want to, uh, uh, on the last slide, remember I asked you if you were ready to step out your outside your comfort zone. So here is what I mean by that. Be willing to let prospects go who are not ideal for your business. I'm going to show you how to do that. No is a very powerful word, a very empowering word, as a matter of fact. But for professionals like you guys who eat problems for breakfast, like you solve problems for breakfast, saying no to a prospect when you know they have a problem that you can solve is very, very difficult. So I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Okay, so let's walk this through from the very beginning. The phone is ringing. As you can see, it's sort of pulsing on the screen. It's a brand new prospective client. They're calling to schedule a meeting, which equals precious time on your calendar, right? So let's start by putting a process in place for qualifying these prospects. So the first step is in, in developing this is to create a discovery questionnaire. This discovery questionnaire could be something that you give to whoever answers the phone. So if you've got a receptionist or an admin, maybe that's you, maybe that's you or a partner, maybe it's anyone who picks it up. Whoever that is should have a templated discovery questionnaire to vet that tire kicker or prospect, to vet every first conversation. And it should look something like this. Here's a super simple one that I threw together. So how did you hear about us? Because this will tell you, you know, if it's a referral or they saw you on Google or wherever they found you, what is their biggest need, right? What problem are they facing? You want to know that. Um, they might say something like, well, I just want to, I just need to get my tax return done. Or um, how much do you charge for a tax return? We'll, we'll get there in a minute. But then ask, you know, what services are you currently getting through your CPA? Maybe they're not. Maybe they're doing their taxes online or they're bookkeeping themselves and they've gotten themselves into a pickle. Um, but it's very helpful to know what services they're already paying for. And then you wanna find out, well, what are you looking for, right? What This is, this is a big one for you because you wanna find out, A, why are they leaving the firm that they're with or why are they wanting to stop doing their DIY solution and move to you? And, and what, what is it about them uh, what's the most important thing that they're looking for in a firm? Because remember, you're interviewing them as much as they're interviewing you. And you have a right that, to say, if they're not the right fit for your business, you have the right for, to refer them elsewhere. But I'm going to show you an easier way to do that. Um, you may also want to find out who their current firm is, may or may not. And then I always recommend, too, asking, and, and this is pretty obvious for you guys, what type of business do you have? Um, obviously the business entity, but also, you know, what, what type of business consulting, what kind of consulting um, so that you can understand again, if that's a business that you feel comfortable working with. Okay. All right. So this person is on the phone, they've called in and this particular person that was on the red phone um, is just really trying to kind of feel out your pricing, right? So let's take it a step further and talk about the strategy for qualifying prospects, especially the ones that you're not sure whether or not they're ideal for you. Um, instead of just automatically booking time on your calendar or in that scenario I just alluded to where a potential client calls to just ask about the price for a tax return or a monthly bookkeeping service, instead of throwing out that number, do this. Send them a detailed email. So create an email template 
And this email should include the way that you work with your clients. This is how we do things here. We're a little different as an example. And then to make this process super seamless on your end, have save that template somewhere. Create it as a template for this introductory email for when you either A, aren't sure if they're a right client or you know they're just kicking tires. This will allow you to always have a consistent email, consistent message and consistently informative response that goes out for every prospect that you're not sure of or that you think is probably not the best prospect. Then if they like, when you send out that email, and we're going to talk about the messaging in that email here and how that all works in a second. If they like what they read and then they feel like, oh, this is exactly what I need, make sure in that email you've got a way for them to book an appointment with you. So a call to action button um, or a link to book an appointment with you is, is very, very important. What you're doing here is you're basically deflecting and you're saying, hmm, I'm not sure if this person is going to be a good fit for me or I don't think they're going to be a good fit for me. So here's what I'm going to do. I, I'm going to say to this person on the phone, hey, listen, um, before we, we move forward on meeting, what I'd like to do is send you an email that explains exactly how, how we work and how we do business and which clients we get the best results for. When you read through that, if you find that this is exactly what you're looking for, then you schedule an appointment with us and we'll look forward to it. Um, but this helps because what's going to happen is if it's someone who's just calling for price, they're never going to respond. And then, you know, that that's fine. You don't want them anyhow. If it's someone who you weren't sure if they're a good prospect or not, um, and they do respond and they're like, yes, this looks amazing how you do business. I This is what I'm looking for. Boom, you've just qualified it. Okay, now let's automate this. So it's one thing to create like an Outlook email and save it as a template. But when you think about how many times a day, especially during tax season, if you are um, uh, not someone who is bookkeeping and you, you are also doing taxes, uh, if you think about how many phone calls you get during tax season, that could be pretty cumbersome to have to go in and copy and paste the same template all the time. So. What I always recommend is automating. I believe in automating as much client communication as possible. What I found is that if you can automate like 80 to 90% of it, you can still keep that human factor. Um, but you're going to add a lot of time back in your day through automation. And here are two email sequences that you could set up in email automation software like MailChimp, for example. And here's exactly how that would work. Now, um, I want you to consider video. So let, let's talk about these two sequences. So for the tire kickers, let's just say that the price shoppers as an example, if you have, and I highly recommend email automation software, um, the first thing that you wanna do once you write that email is you want to go into the software and create a tag, uh, whatever you call it. it, could be potential prospects, tire kickers, whatever you wanna call them. And then, if you set up an email inside the, e the automation software, it's this easy. You literally would get off the phone with a client. You would log into that email automation software, and then um, you would add like their name, their email address, and that tag that you created. Boom, everything else is done. And then the, the email sends out to them. It's automated. It will have a link in the email, as I advise, that they can click and book a time on your calendar if what they read makes sense to them and resonates with them, okay? So that's kind of a one and done. Um, if, however, you're like, uh, not really sure, um, again, put them back into that category of, let's say, call them tire kickers, send out that same email, um, you know, tag them, send out that same email. And then again, if they end up being a good prospect, they're gonna book time with you. Now, let's say though, that someone calls in and they're a great prospect. Maybe they were referred, maybe they somehow found out about you, uh, found you online or whatever and said, this is, I, I'm frustrated with who I'm working with right now. I really want to start a relationship with you. For those ideal prospects, I also recommend an automated sequence. And here's how that would look. A different tag inside your system, your automation system, let's say MailChimp, you would create another tag, just call it prospect as an example, call it anything you want. And you create this tag, again, when you get off the phone, the admin or you or whomever 
pops into that, they put the name, the email, and that tag, and it sends the prospect through a different email sequence that would be a confirmation of the appointment if that's booked. And then an email saying, hey, um, here are all the things that I would love for you to upload to our portal prior to meeting, or maybe it's here are the things that I'd like you to bring with, with you to the meeting so we can make the most of our time. In this type of a sequence, then you can set up reminders to go out and you can eliminate any of the automated uh, follow-ups that they just tend to fall through the cracks. Now, I'm going to mention video again here because anytime you've got an email sequence, I always recommend that that first email that goes out to a prospect, so many people are visual and video works. So take the time to create a little two-minute video about your firm and the clients that you really enjoy serving and embed that in the very first email of your sequence. Strong recommendation there. Um, any questions so far on this? I'm gonna pause for a second because this is a lot. Okay. Okay, perfect. Oh, great question. How do you handle digital marketing if you only have a moderate budget? Super easy. Um, basically what I would do, my best advice to you is, um, find the email automation tool that you like best. MailChimp's so inexpensive. It's like 20 bucks a month. I think, um, that's, I think the least expensive one out there. Don't do the free ones. Um, those are all pretty much free me yum, if you will, because to do any level of automation, you're going to have to pay for it. Um, but basically you can take this handout and sit down and write, you know, follow the steps in here um, and then write your emails and set them up in MailChimp, kind of a do it yourself, but you can do that. That's what I would do. If I had no budget or very minimal budget, I would just, you know, that create all of this myself and write the emails um, and then set them up in MailChimp. I think if you use MailChimp, it's called a journey is their workflow. Uh, but that's a great question. Hopefully I answered it. If I didn't, please let me know. Okay. So let's talk a minute about setting expectations. Setting expectations is a very important part of the whole prospecting process so that new clients, they, um, they won't expect something that you aren't prepared to provide. And so that you don't really descend into chaos during any point in the year, whether that's tax season or any other busy time. So here are four places and ways that you can uh, communicate expectations with clients. And I always advocate over communicating, communicate lots, your website, your onboarding process, being, you know, proactive communication right after scheduling an appointment, like we just discussed, um, and then holding clients accountable. Um, so let's talk about this for one minute, your website. Here's a way to do that. If you don't have a blog, you should have one. Um, create a blog post about why your firm is different or how you do business. Um, you know, working with us or something like that. Write a blog post and then pin it. Pin it. Make that the um, the pinned page on your blog and then link that in an email that you send out. Um, and onboarding. Create a really well thought out onboarding process that's consistent and automated. Again, when you bring on new clients, we'll talk about this more in the next couple slides. Be proactive with your communication, you know, establish internal deadlines for what you need from the client and when, and let them know a few times well in advance, and then consider using more than email to communicate. Consider text. It's, I think, nine out of 10 people want to be able to text with businesses. Um, and honestly, not everyone checks their personal email. Hmm, I'm guilty. Uh, as charged. <laughs> so I'm not going to see things in my personal email for a while. If someone needs something from me right away, they're either going to send it to my business email or they're going to text me. Um, and then um, I want to give you some examples also, some examples of um, setting expectations. If you have internal deadlines for the last day that you will accept documents for tax season, make sure people know that. And again, text or email. Um, communicate service levels. So if someone, if people are bombarding you with email, make sure that you've got a, um, like an, an reply, an automatic reply that gets sent saying, thank you for your email. I'll respond within 24 hours or whatever, whatever it is for you. And then if you have a specific group, you know, like group email boxes, like tax at or accounting at that you use to accelerate, um, to, to help clients see 
how to accelerate getting an answer from you, then let them let them know that um, you're going to get a faster answer by emailing this group email box than emailing me directly. And then lastly, and the last example I have here is make sure that your clients know um, what you need provided on a regular basis, whether it's monthly, whether it's quarterly, um, or of course, tax season. Okay, two more automated processes I'm going to um, talk about here. Can you see the theme? I love automation. Um, so there, there, I think that there are four key automated processes every accounting firm should have. It's the two I talked about a couple of slides ago, and it's these two. So continuing our journey from that phone ringing and trying to decide which of those email sequences to put your prospect in. Now we've had our prospect meeting, okay? We've met them um, and we need to follow up because we know we're sending out a proposal and we really need to keep them warm and excited while we follow up. So create a third email sequence where you are you create another tag, just call it um, hot prospect or whatever you want to call it and have one email that goes out after that. So again, after the appointment, you're popping back into that email automation software and you're, a, you're finding that same person, you're adding a tag that will trigger an email to go out to them that will be like, thank you so much, we enjoyed meeting. And then it will set the expectation for when to expect a proposal from you or an engagement letter, or maybe you wanna link a blog post or give them some other high value tool or checklist or piece of content. So that's the, the third one. The fourth one, super important, maybe even one of the most important is onboarding. Make sure that you've got a very well thought out onboarding process in place. I'm gonna tell you some of the keys to this here in a minute, but again, create another tag. This could be a series of say two to four emails and it needs to be cons a consistent first impression across the board for clients. Think through this process from the client's viewpoint this is an opportunity also to set expectations. So let's talk a minute. Let's dig just a little deeper into onboarding here for a second. Um, this is so important. Have you ever gotten off on the wrong foot with client? So back in my prior life, I actually worked in the payroll industry long, long time ago, many years ago. And I sold payroll to mid and large companies. And I worked with CPA firms for referrals. And I know firsthand how hard it is to come back from poor onboarding. Because again, hello, I worked for a, a payroll company and, and many of them are notorious for that. So when I would sign a deal, I would over communicate the details of, you know, with our implementation team. And then I would hold my breath and hope everything went well. And, you know, eventually I, I, I left that industry. It was really, it was, uh, implementation was always rocky and it was, um, you know, it was, it was very, very frustrating when things get off you know, to the wrong foot or off on the wrong foot with the clients. So um, let's talk about an example of what a great and automated onboarding experience might look like. Number one rule, if you want your emails read, don't overwhelm them. Don't send them this big, long text email that has 94 things that they need to get to you. They're never going to read all of that. I guarantee it. Um, second thing, make sure that the correspondence that you do send, send them is short, clear, welcoming, use automation and spread it across like two to four emails. The first email, use video, welcome them to your firm, make it, make them feel very special. And, and then the second email might be, Hey, um, by tax time, we need to have these things from you or every month I'm going to need these things from you list them out give them links, make it easy for them. And then maybe a third email would be introducing them to your team or introducing them to resources that you've got on your website or uh, free freebies, um, tools or checklists, those types of things. And then maybe a final email in the onboarding sequence would be a couple of months down the road where you just go out there and say, hey, how are we doing? I'd love feedback from you. Tell us what we're doing right, what we're, what we're not doing right, and if you wouldn't mind leaving a Google review, that would be fantastic. Always go get the Google reviews. All right. So I know we were closing in on time, so I'm going to wrap this up. So from the initial phone call through onboarding, there are essentially four steps. You're going to qualify your leads, right? Your prospects. You are setting expectations through all of the automated email sequences that you have set up. 
You're going to manage those expectations by over communicating and holding them accountable to the deadlines that you set and the stuff that you say that you need. And then you're going to deliver a super positive and profitable client experience. Okay. And then um, lastly, if you need help writing and building email automations, that is something that my company does. Um, happy to help, happy to brainstorm with you, strategize. Um, if that's something that you want help with, feel free to pop over to our website and you can book a time with me. But I hope this has been helpful and I want to see if there are any other questions out here. Um, I don't think so. I think we're good to go, Cheska. Right on time. Yeah, right on time. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thanks everybody for joining us today. Thank you so much, Janelle. This was a really good webinar. And um, yeah, happy holidays. It's really, it's coming up. <laughs> Yes. time to spend with family and i hope to see you guys again next year for next year's session of marketing talks <laughs> all good. right Thank everybody you. thanks bye, bye.